It takes us to southeastern Utah. It's kind of science fiction. What if we're surrounded by an alien life form that's so weird scientists can't even detect it? A Colorado professor thinks that might be the case, especially in southeast Utah, and she's urging NASA to investigate. Science and nature specialist John Hollenhorst explores very strange but intriguing speculation in an exclusive story. It's there all over the place in almost any desert with deep canyons and soaring cliffs. So big and bold, it's easy to see, and yet so unobtrusive, it's often overlooked in the awesome scenery. It's called desert varnish, huge dark blotches, a film that covers sandstone cliffs, usually black, sometimes red, often very shiny, reflecting the light of the desert sun. Ancient cliff dwellers in southeastern Utah often made rock art by scratching their designs right into it. So what is desert varnish? And how did it get there on desert rocks all around the Earth? Actually looking at it from here, had thought it was probably a form of lichen. That seems like a decent guess from a tourist. Here's another. The rock and the layer, it's exposed with the oxygen and then maybe it may, may, might have like oxidation, so it changed the color over the years. That's what I think about it. The truth is nobody really knows, and the scientific mystery is what leads to some highly interesting speculation. Nobody has an adequate explanation. Carol Cleland runs a Colorado think tank called the Center for the Study of Origins. She's not a field biologist. At UC Boulder, she's a professor specializing in the philosophy of science. She says desert varnish has stumped scientists ever since Charles Darwin puzzled over it almost two centuries ago. Darwin wondered whether they were biological. In other words, is some form of microscopic life involved? Something captures iron and manganese from the soil or air and glues it to the rocks. It sounds like bacteria, but no one has yet detected any microbes that do it. So scientists are divided on whether desert varnish is caused by something alive or not. Two different sides trying to explain it. Each one thinks they're right, and each one can't explain certain striking features of it. So maybe the problem is that it's a form of life so weird we can't detect it. Science has good tools for finding life that's chemically like us, everything on the so-called tree of life, from E. coli to elephants to Englishmen, all of us related by our DNA to the very first living thing billions of years ago. That's what scientists know how to look for. We're looking for proteins and nucleic acid, DNA and RNA, that's like ours. And there's, oh, that's the only kind of stuff we can detect. Cleland coined the term shadow biosphere. Perhaps there's an entire menagerie of microbes we can't detect because they're chemically different from us. If they exist, perhaps they came from outer space or more likely, perhaps life started on Earth more than once. One time creating us and all life we know, another time creating life that's very different. If life originated in Earth, I believe it's extremely likely that there were multiple origins. This fall, Cleland will publish a book suggesting desert varnish might be a candidate for a shadow biosphere. She's urging scientists to study it and develop techniques that might someday discover a completely different form of life. It would revolutionize biology because biology would now have a second example of life. New techniques for finding life might help answer one of humanity's profound questions. Those techniques then could be used to look for life on Mars. Emails from three NASA scientists show they're aware of Cleland's theory and are interested in it, but they're noncommittal and skeptical. Desert varnish is probably a combination of microbial activity by known organisms and weathering under desert conditions, wrote one of them. But they do suggest it's worth further study, and that might please a tourist or two. No, I don't think it's wacky at all. Just because everything here is carbon-based, it doesn't mean that everything's carbon-based everywhere. John Hollenhorst, KSL 5 News, somewhere in Canyon Country. John, thank you. Professor Cleland's book, due out in October, is called The Quest for Universal Theory of Life, Searching for Life as We Don't Know It.